This is the moment that we have all been waiting for. I've been pulling the charts. I'm not being dramatic. There has been so much energy concentrated in the sign of Aries. And now we have a super moon solar eclipse in that sign. This is going to be life changing to say the very least. Now where this is going to end up popping off in your life for everyone, it's going to be different. I'm going to break down the full astrology chart. What is that you can expect and where these surprises are most likely to unfold. Make sure that you're subscribed, grab some tea, grab some water, and let's go ahead and dive right in. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. My name is Jessica Alexandria, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. Now, I don't mean to be so high energy today, but number one, I feel like I haven't talked to you guys in forever. I feel like last week... I was dormant, I was quiet, we didn't get to go live. And number two, there is, these are one of those moments as an astrologer that I get very, 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 very excited. Why? Because this is the moment in our life where everything seems to kind of click into place. If you've been setting intention, if you've been working on revelations, trans, transitions, transformation in yourself, in your life, sometimes it can kind of feel like you're hitting a brick wall. You're making all these changes, you're setting the intention, but it kind of feels like you might be banging your head up against the wall and you're not really seeing the effects happening actively in your life. It's perfect timing. It's always perfect divine timing and astrologically sometimes we can see that timing timing happening in the astrology charts where everything just seems to miraculously quickly fall into place. Now let me take a few steps back because anytime we have a solar eclipse this is not always going to feel like the easiest trust fall. Oftentimes it's going to feel like the universe literally took its foot and just shoved you right off the side of a cliff. For some of you guys, many of you guys, you're going to feel this in the very areas where you have been needing to hyper focusing on whether you liked it or not, whether you called it in or whether the universe is just like, listen, now is your time to evolve. Now is your time to be a leader. Now is your time to be an advocate. Now is your time to be independent. That's the word independence with Aries energy. Aries is the self-starter, self-initiator, the leader of the entire zodiac. If it wasn't for the pioneering, strong spirit of Aries, we would have no fresh starts. We would have no new beginnings. We would be stagnant. We would be stuck. And that's something that we should all be excited about. When the universe says that it's time for you to be courageous and brave because something new is good for you and something wonderful is developing, it's worth speaking life into yourself. It's worth believing in yourself. It's worth believing in what can happen. And Aries energy, the solar eclipse, the super moon solar eclipse that's happening in the sign of Aries is activating all of those energies, all of those elements, finally for once and for all. Now, let me go ahead and get the chart up for you guys on the screen so you can follow along. Not only is the eclipse happening, of course, in the sign of Aries, but we also have the North Node sitting in the sign of Aries, and we also have Chiron who has been transiting through the sign of Aries. Now, basically what this is telling us is that these changes, these advancements, these developments, this fresh start, this shove into this direction of your life has A, it's faded, but B, it's going to be for your highest and greatest good. And although it may be scary, although it may be triggering for some of you guys, and although it may be provoking in some way, it is absolutely for your own evolution, for the evolution of humanity, and for your healing journey across the board. This transit of Chiron transiting through Aries, moving through the sign of Aries, this isn't new energy. Every single one of you, I promise you, I guarantee you, you've either had to face a really strong fear, you've had to be focused on your independence, separating yourself, disconnecting yourself away from relationships, situationships, that may have loved you, cared for you, may have benefited from you or benefit you, but if you stayed in them, it would have suppressed you. It would have killed your voice. It would have killed your personal power. All this energy focusing on Aries, it's saying it's time to be strong. It's time to believe in yourself. 
it's time to be more comfortable for some of you guys with righteous rage, righteous anger, that there's some things that might have happened to you. There's certain things that it's absolutely imperative for you to feel the feeling of anger, for you to feel this emotion, for you to express it and get comfortable because that too is a part of your power. If we have the North Node in the sign of Aries, then that means that the South Node is following the sign of Libra. What does this show me? This shows me looking at the charts that it's absolutely anytime when you have a, a solar eclipse, this is going to be a shove into a new chapter, a new beginning, a new journey, especially when it comes to relationships. Make sure that you're not over compromising. Make sure that you're not over delivering, like over giving into places that are off balance or in balance in some way, shape or form. This could mean for a lot of you guys that a relationship, no matter how long, no matter how short, that has been holding you back or developments, like if it's not developing, if it's not progressing, if there's things that you're doing that you have to learn to speak up, you have to learn to ask for what you want, you have to learn to not tolerate this anymore, to put yourself first. How do you balance putting yourself first in a relationship while also balancing the relationship itself? These are things that the, these traits are, are gonna be showing showcasing themselves. Now, Although Chiron, North Node, and the Eclipse are happening in the sign of Aries, and Chiron and the North Node have been transiting for quite some time, I want to tell you that although you may have started to see themes of how this energy may be activated and how it's already been playing out in your life, definitely, absolutely keep your eyes, your mind, your energy open for the element of surprise. Eclipses are known for surprising people. They're known for throwing in the most random events, the most random turn of events, things that happen very, very quickly that can change the course of your life forever. The, the promise that I'm seeing within the astrology chart that I think is just absolutely so exciting and so like jaw dropping, like I look at this and I'm like, I can't wait to hear you guys' testimonials. I can't wait to see how this is impacting you, how it's been showing up, is the fact that the part of fortune, the part of fortune rules this pot of luck, this good luck, this little token of appreciation that the universe leaves for us to find or will throw into our lap and say, here, I have this for you, is sitting in the sign right now of Leo and will be perfectly trying Chiron that rules our ability to heal ourselves and to heal the world and this eclipse and the North Node. Now, the beautiful thing about Part of Fortune in Leo is that there is nothing subtle about this energy. It's gonna be big, bold, colorful, beautiful, and there's no way that you can miss this. This may either A, introduce you to something, someone, or a concept, or this beam of light, this warm energy, this thing that gives you a sense of purpose, vitality, and for some of you guys, this is so random, but I just heard in my spirit, organized thinking. So I guess for some of you, it's going to bring clarity in your thinking, clarity in your thoughts, and especially in a world where the energy lately has been feeling a little wobbly, wonky, and off. Sometimes they're, you're kind of watching people around you or even yourself kind of dissociating, separating themselves from their body. I don't know if you guys, if you are around people or if you can identify with this, then you'll, it'll make sense to you. If you're someone who doesn't um, understand association or hasn't experienced it or hasn't been around it, people who, which believe it or not, this happens a lot. It's not like this ran random thing, especially now with Neptune transiting through the sign of Pisces. A lot of people lately are dissociating or feeling really separate from themselves. I was just talking the other day, like maybe a, a month ago, like I felt like my, my head was floating off of my body. And in those moments, I needed to like spend more time grounding myself, centering myself, and this has a lot to do with trying to maintain a regular structure in your life, in your everyday, when really what you're in is just the energies are just vibey right now. When Neptune is transiting through the sign of Pisces, the vibes are so wonkadocious is the way that I call it. You, when it comes to logical thinking and processing information, you have that but you also need a little extra time to kind of like feel out the vibes and feel out the energy. How does this feel? What is the vibe here? Are the vibes off? And there's a need to take a little bit more time for yourself in your meditation, but also to ground yourself, to center yourself so that you're not feeling so absorbed in collective, collective energies right now. This is where as a whole, something that is going to be absolutely essential for your survival, 
and I, I mean that very strongly, is to create boundaries and make sure that you're grounding, that you're centering yourself because these types of transits, you can easily get caught in the wave of where the collective is going, what's happening around you. You could feel like you've lost yourself. You could feel like the reality of life is just so overwhelming that it makes you feel like incapacitated, like you can't even handle it, you can't deal with it. On the flip side, this is a wonderful time for artists and creatives and writers to get out there and to express themselves a little bit more. They're, the doors for you to open up when it comes to creative expression are, they've swung wide open. The problem is, is that you may find yourself second guessing yourself, your work, your talent, your gifts, especially if you're someone who creates art that is odd in some way, shape or form. I, will, I love art across the board. Sometimes the odder the art, the better I relate to it. <laughs> That's just me. This is one of those things too where you'll start to see artists or sensitives kind of having a difficult time with balancing their energy, the amount of vibrations and things that they're absorbing, right? Energies that they're absorbing just in the every day. It can seem really awesome and exciting. It's what you're waiting for, but it can also be very overwhelming. So to balance this and to help you survive with these types of transits is to get out to ground yourself to center. The other thing, and I feel like I'm kind of going off topic here a little bit, is spiritual attack. For those of you guys that are very spiritual, intuitive, that you're tuned in, making sure that you are implementing more energy to protect yourself. I don't know why I'm talking about this during the solar eclipse and the sign of Aries, but Aries is the protector. It is a guardian. It is a warrior. So that may be something that you need to to um, bring into place that you meet, need to enforce at the time of the eclipse is protecting yourself, especially if you're someone who is spiritual or spiritual vulnerable. This may mean needing to wrap your hair, putting essential oils, um, protective oils on your body, on your person, your crown, the base of your neck, the base of your feet, making sure that you are petitioning for protection, that you're praying, etc., etc. I don't wanna go too far into that, but making sure that you are keeping a healthy boundary between you and other people's energies that are also spiritual that may have, they may find attachment to you. There's, there's that. And also if you're honoring your ancestors, whatever your religious background is, whatever your practices are, that you are always putting a bubble around yourself, protecting your space, setting the intention that nothing that can harm you and nothing that you don't need to have in your space that it doesn't have any access to your energy. I don't know why I went off on a tangent with that, but I'm just, it's very important that you are spiritually protecting yourself, okay? The other thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is not only is this solar eclipse happening in the sign of Aries, but we also have a major, major, major conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus in the sign of Taurus. Now talk about surprise, talk about expansion, talk about blessing, talk about gifts and wisdom, all of those things coming together. This is the part where as an astrologer, I have to tell you that this energy is so un unpredictable, so unexpected that I would not even be able to see what this can bring in because it's so left field. Like it's so random. My hopes are that this will benefit many of you guys when it comes to opportunities, jobs, connections, and um, resources. For some of you guys, this could make people instant millionaires set you up for life. I don't know what your situation is, but set you up very, very quickly. I don't necessarily see this as a loss. I see this as an opportunity that presents itself to you quick, 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 rapid speed. For others, I'm seeing this as how you view and see yourself. Like, let's say if you're someone who you've lost confidence in one area of your life, you've lost, lost confidence in something that you want to happen, you lost confidence in yourself, this is going to activate a surge of self-confidence. I'm getting this strong feeling of warmth all over my body and it feels really good. It's gonna activate a sense of purpose, direction, and like, I can do this. I am capable. I am chosen. I am the one. I can do this correctly. I am the right person for the job. It's this feeling, this sense, this understanding of what you are capable of, your potential, and your ability to actually follow through with it. This is wonderful. Now, for some of you guys, you have to understand that that mentality, that sense of empowerment is more 
priceless and more powerful than money and sheer resources all by themselves. A person who is empowered within themselves, a person who feels like they are capable, that they can do anything, that they are powerful, they can actually attract, build, create, manifest all of the things that is that they need for themselves that money can buy and money can't buy. So if I were you, I would set myself up in a position to receive this energy. How do you do that? I would set intention. I would set intention for that confidence, for that courage, for that bravery, for purpose, direction, clarity of mind, and a feeling of personal empowerment. Those are the things that it is that I'm seeing here for the solar eclipse. Now, how this is going to trickle into your personal life, everyone's gonna be different. You're gonna to wanna to look at your rising sign, right? Your rising sign is gonna show you the position of the planets, how they're transiting in your chart, and you're gonna to wanna to look for the sun uh, which uh, in the astrology chart, and I'll link it you know, here, and I'll also link it down below so you can see what it is that I'm looking at. You wanna look at the sun, you wanna look at the moon, and you wanna see where those current, um, where, the, where that planet, those two planets, the moon, or the, the sun and the moon, where they're currently transiting in your chart. Whatever house it is that they fall in, that and the opposite are where you're most likely going to feel the direct effects of this eclipse in a way that's gonna feel powerful, striking, strong. So let me know down in the comments where this eclipse is falling for you. Where is it directly? What house is it absolutely transiting right now? And what house is it opposing? Definitely interested in hearing that. For everyone else, if you are not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please, girl, go ahead and do that now. I show up for you guys pretty consistently for years. Give this video a thumbs up. I've already started, for those of you guys that are shoppers of the apothecary, of, have worked with my magic, are interested in working with my magic and setting intention, I just introduced a new oil that was inspired last week during one of my pick a card readings. One of the piles was introduced to it and I'm telling you guys for the first time now publicly the Courage and Conviction Intention Oil. This oil is a game changer. I don't know why I didn't have this oil in my shop to begin with, but there is a perfect divine timing for everything and looking at the astrology charts right now, the solar eclipse and the sign of Aries, that's happening again April 8th. Uh, 2024 Eastern Standard Time. Now it makes totally sense for me to introduce. It makes total sense for me right now to introduce this oil to you guys. It will be in limited amounts. It will be created a second time. Uh, that the eighth, the solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. So I'll link that down for you guys below. There is going to be a part, a section for you to be able to increase to include your intentions. What are the intentions that is that you're setting for yourself at the time of this Aries eclipse? For many of you guys, let me say this one more time. This is the time to set intention for your empowerment, for your courage, for your bravery, for you showing up and for you believing in yourself. And for some of you guys, many of you guys about personal power, conviction, believing in yourself, believing in your purpose, believing that the divine is looking out for you and being open to that energy. Because again, these energies lately have been very wonky and wobbly. They can make you feel disconnected and they can make you feel unsure of yourself, the world around you, relationships. The other thing that I think that is gonna be very important for you guys to set intention for is protection, absolutely protection. I have an intention oil for that. I'll link that down below as well. This is something that you wanna anoint on your body every day, especially right before you go to bed. You only have to do it for me. You only have to do it one time before you go to bed and it will literally carry you until the next 24 hours until you go to bed the very next day. And I specifically set and tell people to set intention with a protection oil at night. This is one of the time when your subconscious is more relaxed, when you're more at ease, when you're falling asleep. For those of you guys that sleep at night, right? Um, yeah, so you're more vulnerable and it'll carry you, protect you throughout the night into the next day, okay? The next thing that I think that you should set intention for, absolutely looking at these astrology charts, is for heightened wisdom, heightened sense of awareness, your ability to keep your mind's eye open to divine wisdom, to divine intervention. Partly because of the fact that Jupiter and Uranus are going to be directly conjunct in the sign of Taurus. Now, it's interesting because Taurus is more stable. It's more secure. It doesn't really like change and movement. And with Uranus and Jupiter, 
Uranus the planet of abundance, I'm sorry, Uranus the planet of surprises and unexpected developments and Jupiter the planet of abundance, these two energies together merged are going to take um, both of these, both of those elements, both of those extreme elements and blast them up and out. So this is a wonderful time to use this for higher thinking, higher evolution, for activating your own higher wisdom. For that reason, I recommend the higher, higher wisdom fixed candle. This is going to help you to connect with your intuition, divine connectedness, setting intention for you to have discernment and for you to have clarity with the messages that you are sensing, the messages that you will receive, and being able to capture them and making sure that um, they are for your highest and greatest good. That's the purpose of that candle, especially if you've been experiencing uh, psychic blocks lately, intuitive blocks, and you need to also simultaneously protect yourself while you are, you know, doing your work or as a spiritual person or going to your altar and just making sure that you are um, fostering self care and good hygiene with your spiritual with your spiritual bodies. Okay, so. Thank you guys again so much for hanging out with me. I am sending you guys all of my love. Please make sure that you are subscribed. If you have any questions about the solar eclipse, go ahead and let me know, let me know down below in the comments. Also, if you need me, you can find me working my magic in the apothecary, bahadilife.com. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.